Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you how to graph the general trigonometric sine or cosine function. Now, the four uh, constants that determine how the function is graphed are, it follows, the amplitude, the periodicity factor, the shift left or right, and the shift up or down. So, in order to understand what that actually means, we're going to go back to something we're probably a little bit more familiar with, at least to show you how the shifts left and right and the shifts up and down work. So, for example, let's say someone gave you the equation y equals x squared and asked you to graph that. Most of you would say, that's not a problem for me. I can simply put a y, x, y axis down. So, this would be the y axis, this would be the x axis, and y equals x squared parabola would look something like that. So, no problems with that. Now they say, well, what if it was y equals x squared plus 3? Then you say, okay, that shifts everything up 3 units. So, you graph the, uh, the parabola again, but instead of having the vertex at the origin, you would now have the vertex 3 units up, and it would look something like this. And then finally someone said, well, what if the function looks like that? y equals the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 3. Then you realize everything is shifted. In this case, if the sign is a negative, that means it shifted to the right. If the sign is positive, that means it shifted to the left. So in this case, it would mean that we shifted to the right. And so the problem would then look like this. One, two, three. One, two. And the vertex would be over here. So that's how we would graph the function y equals x squared. The first one shifted up. The second one shifted to the right. Well, here, the constants b and c have the exact same function. C simply means that it would move it up or down. If it's positive, it moves up. Negative, it moves down. The B here, if it's a negative B, it would shift it to the right. If it's a positive B, it would shift it to the left. Now here we have an example. Y equals 2 times the sine of the angle 2 theta minus pi divided by 2 plus 3. But be very careful because notice that this doesn't look exactly the way it lo looks like that. The periodicity factor, the number that determines how many complete cycles you're going to have in a 2 pi period, um, is, is, uh, needs to be taken out of the parentheses like this. So it has to look like that before you can actually try to graph it. Here you can see that you don't have that. You have to factor out the 2 first and have pi minus something here. Well, let's do that first so we have this looking exactly the way it looks there. So here we have y equals 2 times the sine of 2 times theta minus. Now since we factored out the 2, this becomes pi divided by 4 plus 3. Now you may say, well, how do you know that? Well, if you're not quite sure, multiply this back in. 2 times theta gives you 2 theta, and 2 times pi over 4 gives you pi over 2. So you know that you're correct. So the way I always check this is I'm not quite sure what you're going to get when you factor out a number here. Multiply back in, make sure you get back exactly what you started with. All right, now we're ready to grab this. So on the vertical axis, we have the variable y. On the horizontal axis, we have the variable theta. Now notice that the whole function is going to be shifted up three units. That means the equilibrium point, the point about which the sine function will oscillate, will be at y equals three. So we have one, two, three. And then at that point, we're going to put on the dotted line because that will be the line about which the oscillations of sine function will be drawn. Of course, then since the amplitude is two, that means we're going to go from a positive 5 to a positive 1. So we're going to oscillate between 1 and 5 with the equilibrium point at 3 or the middle point at 3. So our oscillations will go like this. Now normally, if we didn't have a shift left, right, the, of course the sine function would start over here and we'll go up and down. And maybe it's not a bad idea to graph the, to put a little dotted line at the bottom of where the function is going to be and a dotted line at the top where the function is going to be. So you know that you're going to oscillate between those two lines, so it makes it a little bit easier to graph. Okay, normally the full function, the full wave like this going from there to there, would be one period and that would be equal to 2 pi. But since we have a 2 here, the periodicity factor is 2, that means we're going to have two complete oscillations in a 2 pi period. That means in this case, one oscillation will be equal to pi, so call this e pi, and then a second oscillation, like this, is going to be 2 pi. So in this case, since we have the periodicity factor equal to 2, we're going to have two complete oscillations in the 2 pi period. Otherwise, we would have something that looks like this, a single oscillation in the distance of 2 pi. In addition to that, we can see there's going to be a shift left to right. In this case, since it's negative, the shift is going to be 
to the right. All right, so instead of starting over here at theta equals zero, we're going to shift everything over by a pi fourths. So let's find out where these are. So if this is pi, then this would be pi over two, and this here would be pi over four, and of course, and this here would be uh, three pi over two, and so forth. All right, so the, if everything's done shifted to the right, I'm now going to use a red color to indicate the actual function. So this is the actual function we'll graph. We're graphing, so we're moving everything over to the right, pi over four, so it's going to start over here, and soon to go up and down, and see when this is down, we get over here, and like that, and like that, and like that. All right, so everything is shifted to the right a distance of pi over four. And so the red line actually represents, and of course I continue like this, so I'm starting at the point y equals three, we start at point y equals one. And so we have the whole function shifted to the right, pi over four, shifted up, three, periodicity factor is two, so you have two oscillations for a two pi period, and then the amplitude is two, so we go up two and down two as we're oscillating back and forth, and that's how you graph it. And so always be careful, if they give you something like this, make sure you then transform it from this to that, so that you factor out the periodicity factor, otherwise your graph is not gonna look correct. And that's how we do that.